Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back, watching all this stuff. I appreciate it, and I uh, hope you're having a great day. Um, so, I've got a little photo here. I'm in Luminar 3, and I'm just taking a photo that, um, honestly, I passed up in my library time and time and time and time and time again. Anyway, so, you get the point. I just kept passing it. I was like, eh, you know, it's just, it wasn't exciting. I was like, it's dark. I think I lost a lot of the color. Sure, I could work on that. Sorry, scratching my leg. Um, but, uh, I don't know. I just... I just wasn't excited about it. And then I was like, you know, damn it, Jim, you know, get in there and fight kind of thing, right? And I was like, I'm gonna make something out of this photo. So let me show you the photo. Here it is. I was down along the River Clyde in downtown Glasgow, Scotland, which is just a lovely town. Um, this is a few years ago. I shot this with my Olympus camera, uh, which is micro four thirds. Hence, uh, you can sort of tell it's a little closer to square in terms of the, uh, the way the frame looks. Um, so that's the photo that I uh, started with. And in my finished pix folder, I have this, uh, whoops, yeah, there we go. Sorry, Luminar 3, yeah, see, it does a little twitchiness. Um, I don't know, people ask me, I don't know, there's a little, it's a little twitchy now and then, but uh, anyway, so that's the finished photo. So obviously a whole lot brighter and, oh, Jim, what'd you do to the color kind of thing. So let me jump into that and show you how I took it from kind of a, you know, ho-hum, kind of boring to something that's, you know, well, it's more eye-catching, um, primarily because of the color and the brightness and stuff like that, but may or may not be to your taste, that's okay. I, I don't actually know if I really like it like this, uh, but I like it enough that I guess I'll make a video out of it. And I do like my color, as you probably know from watching previous videos. So let's hop into it. Okay, so here we are. The first thing I did is I went and added some filters, right? So I got develop, I'm gonna look at my notes because I went through this. Um, I'm not gonna just turn off the filters and then turn it back on. I wanna walk through the edit. Um, I've got tone, I've got golden hour, which I love. I, I love so many of these, to be honest. Um, I've got, uh, oh, split toning. Yeah, yeah, baby. God, I love split toning. It's so awesome. I've got saturation vibrance a second time, and then I've got structure. So let's hop into this thing and start editing. Uh, the first thing I did is, um, you know, with the um, develop filter, and you know what, I'm going to move tone up. Um, I tend to use these two kind of in, in parallel or in tandem to kind of... Um, I've used this term before, it's like a dance, right? Uh, I always start with the light because I wanna get the light right before I really get into the color work. Um, and so it's kind of a dance to get the light right. So I'm gonna go in here and one of the things I do is I add contrast usually right out of the gate. And so I'm to 32 on this one. Uh, so there we go. And all that does is make it a lot darker, right? So um, I took the highlights down because they were a little bit too much for me in that uh, sunset, but then I lifted the shadows uh, a fair amount, not a ton, 27. So again, still not really where I want to be. Um, added a little clarity, something like that. Um, and then I come over here to, to tone, and that is really, um, where did I put it? Ah, here it is. Sorry, I'm looking at my notes and they're out of order with the way I have the filter. So smart tone, I went something like 84, I think. Yep, 84. Uh, and then with the uh, shadows, I lifted those to 47. So something like that. And so you can see immediately like, wow, the photo is a lot different. It's a lot brighter. And so when you go from that to that, I haven't touched the color. The sky looks a whole lot better to me already. Um, I think the orangey kind of gold color is coming in a little bit stronger. I'm going to do more to that, of course. But um, of course, because this is me I'm talking about. Um, but I'm going to go back up here. I actually warm this up a little bit. I went to like four or five on that. And then I went to like you know, 16, 18, 20, something like that, uh, to add a little bit of that kind of pinkish tint because it was a sunset. I love that color uh, sort of range uh, in my sunset photos, and so I wanna kind of bring that out. Um, so I think we're good there. Now we're going to saturation and vibrance. No uh, saturation work, but I'm gonna bump up the vibrance a bit. Uh, the difference is saturation is gonna drag all the colors, uh, you know, higher up in terms of saturation or intensity and Vibrance really just hits the ones that are kind of the non-dominant colors. I think it helps, uh, again, personal preference. Um, golden Hour, I'm doing like a 19, and you can see already the photo is starting to look like what you saw the final result. There's a key thing I did, which you probably noticed, and that was I cropped the photo. And so about the time that I start getting into the color work is, is when I'm gonna crop, and that's just simply because, um, I don't know, it's just kind of how I do it. Um, so now it's straighter. And I'm doing 16 by nine, and I want to move up like that. I, the one thing about the four thirds sensor, you know, Olympus, great cameras, small light, portable, lots of lenses. Um, 
One of the things that I got over time to not really like so much is the aspect ratios. I know some people love it and that's fine. Um, I kind of miss the three to two ratios, which is what I shoot with on my Sony. Um, and of course I love 16 by nine, uh, but that's that's something that you know, you're know you not shooting. You're gonna be doing that in post. So um, I think that's about straight. I might get a little bit more of that back. Yeah, something like that. Um, one thing I would like to see the crop tool, is that straight? It might be a little bit tilted to the right. Sorry. Um, I should, uh, I should get this straight the first time. Uh, the thing is, what I was gonna say is like in Lightroom, there's that little line, maybe you don't have Lightroom, but if you do, you know, you can get that little ruler or whatever it is, you can just drag it across your photo. That would be so helpful uh, in Luminar to make sure you get your line straight. I think that's straight. If not, we're all friends, we're gonna pretend it's straight, right? So feel free to leave a comment and say, hey Jim, <laughs> not straight. Um, okay, so split toning. If you haven't used split toning, it basically, as you can see here, it divides the highlights and the shadows, and then you can pick a color. Uh, and, a, and a saturation amount or just an intensity, right? And so I do that a lot um, if I'm accentuating a sunset or just changing the colors around. You can use it to make vintage looks. Um, maybe you should do a video about that. Um, I don't know if I ever have, uh, but, I, but I use it for a lot of stuff and it's super powerful and flexible and um, well, it's just fun. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go highlights. I went to about 25 on the hue. Uh, so kind of in this orangey kind of yellow range. Now highlights, right? So this can be the brighter parts of the image, so the sky, in other words. And then the amount is about 43. So uh, look at that. So you can see, you know, uh, sorry, I've got a bum knee. Um, if you saw my last video, a vlog, um, I did that and then the next day I went back and filmed some different vlog stuff and I tweaked my knee. I can't walk, it itches. I got like tiger balm on it, which is like this icy hot thing. It hurts like crap. Um, anyway, so I'm constantly fiddling with my knee. So. I'm twitchier than normal uh, in this video, so I apologize. Um, okay, but hopefully it's gonna heal because I'm sick of sitting down. Um, everything hurts though. So anyway, shadows. Um, I'll pick a blue hue, which is over here. It's like 199 or so, something like that. And then the amount is pretty low. I just wanted to bring up some of the color. Um, and now at this point, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the colors, except there's a couple things I don't really like. And that is, um, I've got way too much color uh, this is a white uh, walkway. Let me show you the before and after. Well, you can't really tell because of the darkness, but that, that's a railing. It's not blue in real life. So I'm gonna take the saturation out of that. So all I do is I went to negative 40, um, something like that. And I just come over here and paint it in. Um, I'm gonna say negative 40 and I'm gonna say paint. And all I'm doing is taking the saturation out of this concrete work um, and this sidewalk here. And I'm gonna, left key is, uh, left bracket key that is, is gonna lower my mouse, uh, or sorry, decrease the size of my mouse, which I'm using to now erase that color or saturation level from the skyline, basically that horizon line uh, as well. So I just wanted to get that saturation out of there because the sidewalk was kind of blue, which there are no blue sidewalks, even in Dr. Seuss book, well, maybe in a Dr. Seuss book. Um, that hand railing, which is clearly white, shouldn't be blue anyway. So I did all that. Uh, and then I'm gonna do one more thing, and that's with structure. I'm gonna go negative 55, so something like that. And all I'm doing, if you look at what negative structure does, it just kind of reduces the crunchiness of the photo, right? So it basically smooths it out. I kind of use it like a denoise, just as an artistic effect. Uh, but what I'm gonna do, now I'm gonna right bracket key to make my mouse bigger. And in this case, I'm just gonna paint it in. I just wanted to um, soften up the sky and I'm doing a sloppy job here with the masking. Uh, on my real photos, I tend to go a little slower. On these videos, there's no point in you just watch me mask because there's not any skill involved. Uh, well, that's actually not true. Uh, there's no point in watching it. It's not like I'm giving you a tip other than slow down. Um, and so you can always check your mask with that little button. I missed a chunk in the sky. I got some of that tower. Again, we're friends, so we're gonna pretend that that was a clean masking job, which it clearly is not. But um, there we go, that's how I got to that. And so that negative structure, masking it into the sky and the water just kind of smooths it out. Um, back in this day, I didn't shoot a lot of long exposures with like a 10 stop filter and all that. I do that now, and what I would probably do in this situation today is use the 10 stop and shoot a long exposure so that that water in the river was really smooth and silky just a personal sort of artistic preference. I just like it a lot. Um, I could add negative structure again and again and again and again and just stack it to really get a more blur in that water. But I'm not gonna do that in this video. You could try it, it may or may not look good. I don't know offhand. Uh, it'll definitely make it blurrier. 
uh, but I don't know how smooth it'll get. So it's worth experimenting if you want to try it. You can always just say, go to a filter and you can just say duplicate and just do it again and again and again, right? And just keep hitting duplicate. In this case, you would also be duplicating what you did in the sky. So you might want to duplicate it the first time, erase it from the sky, and then use that filter, which is now just on the water and dupe, 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 right? Anyway, I'm getting off topic. The point was just, that's how I smooth out some of the um, less interesting bits. You could also come back and take structure. I like a little bit of detail in uh, man-made structures and in in uh, nature uh, nature things like um, you know rocks or mountains, things like that. I like a little bit of crunchiness. So in this case, I'm gonna go add a little bit back to this stuff on the left-hand side. And I'm just gonna paint that in right here on the BBC building and on this little bit of a concrete uh, walkway. And that's it. So you can see the mask there. Again, I missed some spots, but you're not going to hold it against me um, because I'm going fast and kind of breaking things. Um, but that's it. That's an idea. Um, I like the play or the contrast of the smoother sky and water with a little bit of detail uh, or structure, kind of crunchiness in the building and the man-made stuff. Uh, but the nature, uh, natural stuff, sky and water, I like to be smoother. I don't know. That's just kind of how I like to operate. Just a thought there. Um, but the key here was, um, you know, take advantage of the, the natural color that's present um, which you can do by, you know, when you change contrast, it'll impact colors. Uh, you can do temperature and tint, but I bumped up the vibrance and then golden hour and split toning really made a big color difference for me. I think I might come back and actually take some of this pink down. It may be a little too pink. Maybe that looks a little bit better. And I actually might add a little bit more golden hour to give it a little bit more of that golden pop. Um, something like that. Again, it's, it's art and it's fun. You should do whatever you want to do and just have fun doing it. Um, and one of the reasons I like to go back and edit photos is because I come up with new things I'm thinking about. Like I first edited this one a few days ago, and I was like, oh, I think I'll do a video about that. It's kind of fun. It's, you know, a nice color. It's a big change. Uh, here's the change, not including the crop, of course. Went from that to that, um, which is kind of like, wow, now. But um, I like to go back and alter things, so it's kind of fun. Um, and it's, uh, I guess that what that really means is I'm never, I'm, I, you know, I never feel like I fully get it right or... Uh, I'm fully happy about my edits. Um, uh, you're probably that way too, right? Where you edit and you're like, oh, I love it. And then like a day later, you're like, eh, I don't know. Maybe I, maybe I only kind of like it. And then you change it and you're like, I love it. And then a day later, you're like, eh, I don't know if I love it anymore. You know, so anyway, I'm like that very much. But um, that's it for this one, my friends. I just wanted to walk through the workflow here, share some of these filters and some of these tips and tricks that I walked through. Uh, none of this is really new. You've seen me do this before, but I thought the change was pretty significant going from that to that. And I think it makes the photo much more, um, you know, more, uh, what, is, what am I trying to say? It'll pop off the page quite a bit more now than it uh, would before. And uh, that's it for this one, my friends. So thanks a lot for watching. Feel free to drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think about it. And uh, that's it. So I'll see you soon. Have a great one. Thanks for watching. Take care and adios.